Welcome back to another episode of Crave TV. Today we are going to be exploring downtown Spokane, starting with the Montvale Hotel. And this is the oldest boutique hotel in Spokane. We're so excited to see the rooms, hear all the stories. But first, I've been looking around for Adam, and I can't find him anywhere. Adam! Hey, check this out. Shocking. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You sure know your let's way around. Let's yeah. Let's go, let's go see what it's all about. Okay, welcome to Crave TV. Hi, I'm Adam Hegstead, a chef and restaurateur in the Inland Northwest. I'm all about the people because that's what hospitality is built on. Hi, I'm Chandler Baird with Spokane Eats. I'm a local foodie and lifestyle influencer in the Pacific Northwest. I'm all about highlighting our local eateries and businesses and the communities that support them. Crave TV is the telling of stories through the visiting of places and restaurants, meeting the people who make it happen, and talking to chefs, farmers, producers, and restaurateurs who make up this amazing industry. This is Crave TV. I'm Denise. I'm the manager of the Montmel. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. Nice, to meet, nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. We're excited to check out this amazing spot. This is such a beautiful spot right here. Thank so you. much history. So yes. many maybe ghosts. Yes. <laughs> definitely maybe. some ghost stories. Okay. Well, will you show us around? You got a little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of it's got yeah. history. Very much. All right. Let's check it out. All right. So we've heard some stories about some haunted rooms. Being on the haunted tour. We want to see one. Can you show us one? Okay, so 304 right. is known as the most haunted room. Most Woo! haunted, all right. Yes, with most action, so let's see. By so action, like you mean like voices, noises? Yes. Okay. Like what What do people like say? Like, is there like ghosts floating around? Or what? They just mostly hear stuff. Um, a lot of people complain about being able to hear people outside their door. Oh, okay. That's the most. Interesting. So you come it's not too terrible. I mean, that's oh, a pretty curious nice. ghost. Yeah. And you can get the view of the Fox Theater right outside your window. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. And is this like your standard room? Yes. Standard suite. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Let's go see. Let's go see the presidential suite. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go. So this is the presidential suite. So that's in the nicest room that we have here at the Mamba. Nice. You have one of these? Uh, two. Two of these. Yep. So oh, yeah. Nice. So many windows. Yeah. Nice fireplace. Came back. So I heard a rumor that Bing Crosby. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We think he might have stayed here, but we can't confirm. Did. Yeah, he most likely did. For sure. Yeah. 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 So what? tell us about the hotel a little bit. Um. So we have a little bit in each room about the hotel. Um, and it was built in 1883. Um, and at first it was a hardware store in the basement. Okay. Um, and then there's rumors that it was a brothel, but there's nothing to prove that, but there's rumors. <laughs> um, and then it became a hotel and I think it closed down for a while and was a law firm. And then uh, it opened back up as a hotel. Yeah. Closed for like 30 years, right? Is that yeah, what you said? Yeah, a long time. Years. Yeah. It was a long time, then it's remodeled. And then um, it kind of did like kind of how it is today. And the oldest boutique hotel in Spokane, is that yes. what I read? Yep. Yep. It explains why Very it's historic. a little haunted. A little yeah. haunted. We love that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It just adds to the flair. Here. Just, you know. I mean, yeah. we're here. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Adam, you have a restaurant kind at of at the very basement. bottom. Yeah. Yes. In the old boiler room of the hotel. So that's where you get the unicorn is. So fun. It's delicious. It is. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Here is the Montbell Loft Suites. Wow, quite a change up. Yeah, it's yeah, a... modern real quick. Oh my gosh, look at the little oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. steam fire thing. Wow. Steam fireplace. Yeah. Cool so these are available for if you have an event. Yeah, at the Montville Event Center. Mm -hmm. Or um, if it's within 30 days, the front desk can book it out too. Okay. Okay. I just like to keep them reserved for the Montville Event Center. Yeah, I love the brick and the exposed wrap. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. basically, if you have a wedding, like it can be like a bridal suite, something like right. that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you and your family could come stay in here. Get ready for the wedding. Yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah, cool. Yeah, a little bit of classic and then a little modern. It's... Yeah, it's really fun in here. And there's some bedrooms. Yeah. We have a washer and dryer in each one, I think, that are in here. Yeah, and full kitchen. Yeah, full kitchen. Cool. Oh, it's right out here. Woo! Yeah, this is where Bean Crosby came to write um, Dreaming of a White Christmas. <laughs> I see the inspiration. Oh my it. gosh. Very bright. <laughs> Such a cool view, though. It is very nice. See the rooftops and everything. Yeah, yeah you can see the fog. 
steam plant. Little somewhere. atrium area right above yeah. it. Yeah, the lighting for the atrium. Come up here and work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where I do my best work. Some fresh yeah, air. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you weren't blinded by all, Cause there's no all windows. the white. <laughs> all right, we saw the hotel. Now we're in the boiler room of the hotel. Ah. Gilded Unicorn. Perfect. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Gilded Unicorn. You ready to get some food and maybe have a cocktail? We are. Of course. Are you ready to cook it up? Yeah, let's go. All right. I'm in the kitchen today. Perfect. All right, I'm back in the kitchen of the Gilded Unicorn with Chef Aaron. What are we going to make today? Uh, we're going to make our wild mushroom stroganoff today. Amazing. Y'all focus on like the comfort food, right? Yep. So it's American classics, but kind of turned up a notch. Let's do it. Where do we start? Perfect. We're going to start over with our pasta. And this pasta looks super fresh. I feel like you don't usually see it like that in restaurants. No, we get fresh uh, pappardelle egg noodles from Joseph's Pasta. So we're going to drop some our water over here. Okay. Next, we're going to take some mushrooms. We like our food to have some texture, so we're actually going to bread these in some flour and then fry them. Is that just normal flour? Is it seasoned? Uh, seasoned flour. Yeah. So, so it's almost like a chicken fried mushroom at this point. Oh, heck yeah. Why have regular mushrooms when you can have fried mushrooms? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. How long have you been working here? Uh, I've been here for about five months. So still a little new. Okay. And what's your background? My background, so I have been cooking since I was about four. Okay. Um, this is butter or honey butter? Uh, just butter. Okay. <laughs> regular old butter. And then we'll get some pea. Ooh. Those in. Cooking since you were four, so you've just yep. always loved it. Always loved cooking. I've known since I was about eight that this is what I wanted to do okay. professionally. What are, sorry, what's that spice you put in? Uh, that's just um, thyme and parsley, little herbs, and then some seasoned salt. Perfect. And what's your favorite thing to cook? Oh, man. That's such a hard question. Yeah. Um, Honestly, whatever is season, I kind of like to switch it up and um, try new things always. So I'm constantly trying to do something a little bit different and new. Yeah. Beautiful. Get that going, and then we'll grab our pasta. So this is just like simple, classic ingredients. Yep, absolutely. Add the creaminess, add the butter, call oh, it yeah. good. Y'all are known, I guess, I feel like every time I come here, I get the tater tot casserole. Yep, that is probably our most popular dish. Is it? Okay. What else do people, what, what's the most popular besides that? Um, after that's probably our pork chop. So we uh, honey drain it for about 24 hours, and then it comes with uh, macaroni and cheese and then braised kale. Ah. All right. And then we'll grab our plates. Oh, that's where the money's at, right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That looks so good. This is our uh, mushroom sauce. Wow. And made from scratch in-house, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yes. Not like the stroganoff I make at home. I'll tell you that. Yeah. It's kind of what we're known for. Is yeah. Classic dishes, but reinvented in a way. I love that you played it on top of the sauce too. Then it's not all soggy. Oh my gosh. Yep. Come over and we'll grab our mushrooms. Put those right on top. Wow. Sour cream, of course. Do a little bit of pepper. And then just to finish some microgreens. Oh my gosh, that looks heavenly. Beautiful. And the portion size I feel like is really good too. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Well, let's head out to the bar and see what kind of cocktails they're ripping up. All right, we come. All right, what do you got? Gifts for y'all. Oh, 
Oh, oh some, the stroganoff. Yeah, mushroom that stroganoff. Amazing. Tater tot casserole. It's my favorite. Classic. And then our deviled egg. Oh yeah, you, of course. you picked all the classics. You have to. And then what, what cocktails do we have here? We have the gun show. We have the gun smoke. Gun smoke. And then we have uh, one of our classics. It's the gilded old fashioned. All right, that's that's been around forever. All three, all of these have been around for quite a while. <laughs> these are the kind of the staples. Yeah. Okay, so when you come to Gilded Unicorn, now you know what to order. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, and like Aaron's done a really good job of like kind of detailing detailing these out a little bit and updating them a tiny bit. So kind of our dishes are always evolving and kind of yeah. changing a little bit. Same with the cocktail program and everything. So. Yeah, I, I love the fried mushrooms. It's a great little crunch addition. Well, and like yeah, just the different textures. You have like creamy mm -hmm. and hot and cold. And Lovely. What are your guys' favorites? Uh, the tater tot casserole is my That's absolute favorite. Yeah, you can't beat it. Um, I also like one of the new dishes that Aaron put on, the Swedish meatballs. Oh, yeah. I really ah. like that a lot. It eats yeah. so, so well. Yeah. We need that because we don't have Ikea in Spokane. Exactly. <laughs> so we have to have those somewhere. Yeah. Oh, the fun. Rangoons. The Rangoons I love. I know you guys love yeah. Rangoons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're delicious, though, so it's they all are worth so good. it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think my favorite's probably the pork chop, um, oh. it's just very classic, and then the barbecue rib poo poo platter. Oh, yeah. It's just fun. You get to kind of build your own sandwich. So. It's basically you make your own McRib. Barbecue <laughs> rib yeah. poo poo platter. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yep. Did you come up with that? <laughs> yeah. You definitely yeah. came up with that name. <laughs> so it's like a classic thing from mm -hmm. the '70s. So what we try to do is like take things like from like '50s to '70s or '80s, and like reinvent them, like make them. A little bit new and special, like tater tot casserole. Everyone's yeah. had that a thousand times. Are those pickled jalapenos? Yeah. Oh. So underneath <laughs> is like the braised beef and then the mushroom gravy, tater tots, four year age cheddar. You know, it's like taking all the same elements that you would get, you know, in tater tot casserole and then trying to make it new. And elevating it. Yeah, elevating it, yeah. With okay. better ingredients, better quality things. And yeah, and tell us about the art. We were talking a little bit about it. So the art is a really random collection of things. So yeah. some stuff is thrift store stuff. Some stuff is from museums. Uh -huh. We have things from like famous artists and some from like that, that piece over there is from the British Museum. And there's like a, a pretty wild collection of things. Yes, but I there think is. it like adds to the ambience. So what we really wanted to do is take this space. It It's maybe only 15 or 20 years old. Like this space used to be the broiler, the boiler room of the hotel and keep that same sort of vibe so like when you come in here it feels like you found a secret little spot yeah. like some sort of special gem mm -hmm. and then keeping that vibe with the art and even like the tables are all the same like making the carpet feel like very classic like kind of giving that whole vibe even the plates like the plates are mismatched on purpose right um we want it to feel like it's like you're eating off your grandma's china you yeah. know like the, the glassware is like totally like that too it's so fun. Yeah. I feel like it's definitely a very unique vibe for Spokane. Yeah. It's a great like late night spot. It's always dark. It feels like you're in this little dungeon. Well, and then we take, you know, we hire great people and they get to put their thumbprint on the things that are happening. It's not like, you know, our, our menu is always changing and evolving. Like every couple of weeks we're changing things and making things a little bit, you know, better and elevated and doing it a little bit differently. And so that's like important. Our people are what makes it special. It's great. Okay, well, thanks for having us. Can we dig in? Let's do it. <laughs> Join us after the commercial break. We're going to head over to the Iron Goat for more Crave TV. Downtown. Downtown Spokane. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Good. Welcome to Iron Goat. We'd love guys... to go check out the brewery. That would be awesome. Let me show you around. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we're in the brewery. Yep. Explain the process here. All right, well... We start in this room back here, which is our mill room, okay. and this is where we keep all our grains, okay. and uh, we crush them. They go up through this auger into a grist case, and this is where we hold all the crushed grain mm -hmm. right before we start brewing. Uh, when we're ready to brew, we've made calculations on water temperature and grain temperature, okay. so that when they mix together, they're at the exact temperature we need for conversion from starches to sugars. Mm -hmm. Uh, from there, we start running over into our kettle, which is this larger vessel over here, and that's where we start adding the hops. And so we'll do early additions for bittering, uh, later additions for, you know, a little flavor profile, aroma, and then once it's done in there, we'll also add like adjuncts. We have some beers that have, you know, like orange peel and honey. Different flavoring agents. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so from there then we go through our heat exchange which basically just cools it down enough 
to where when we pitch the yeast, we don't kill, kill it. the yeah. little guys because, yeah. you know, they're the hardest workers in the brewery. <laughs> so. uh, on a side note, we do uh, wild fermentation here. Nice. which uh, basically on our roof, uh, we have a uh, cool ship, which is an open catch uh, fermentation vessel. So we do the same process here, but then we pump it up to the vessel on the roof. To and then yeast. Yes. Let it grow and naturally. And, and bacteria, yeah. uh, the good ones, you know, like yeah. your yogurt style gut yeah. bacteria. Uh, and they go in and it inoculates it, and then we bring it down into the barrels uh, and so you have a true mature. Spokane beer. You have Spokane water, you got Spokane yeah. Yep. yeast. Yeah. We call it Spokambic. Yeah, so. that's great. <laughs> that's great. That's very cool. But uh, so fermentation vessels, you know, we have them all in lines, a couple of different sizes that we're mm -hmm. using. Uh, the larger ones takes two brews uh, to fill it. That's for more of our core beers, uh, you know, like our Buzzsaw, McThunder, our Blonde. Uh, you know, uh, headbutt IPA, any of those are all pretty much in the larger vessels. Uh, what's happening in there is that the uh, yeast are consuming the sugars and as a byproduct, you're getting CO2 and alcohol. Uh, one of the things that we do here, especially now that CO2 has gotten to be very expensive, uh, we capture the CO2 so that the CO2 actually reabsorbs into the beer. Okay. And we have to use less of outside CO2 when we carbonate it. Okay. Oh, so, nice. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, from there, once the beer is, is basically done fermenting, we uh, transfer it over to the bright tanks, which are the more flat bottom vessels. Mm -hmm. And that's where we do the final conditioning. So if so we go can, into... I see you guys have a little bit in barrels, so you age a little bit in barrels on some of it? We do. Uh, so, so instead of going right into the kegs or canning, you can age some a little bit? Yeah, and typically what we're doing in the barrels is it's before it's carbonated, so it's going to get pushed from the fermenter mm -hmm. into the barrels. Sometimes, depending on what kind of beer it is, if it's a wild beer, uh, like something that we've open caught, mm -hmm. it goes directly from the source into it because we don't want to contaminate any of our other equipment. Yeah, so. yeah that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, we saw where the magic gets made. Here's okay, the magic. We saw. Yeah. What do we got here? So uh, this first beer here is our Buzzsaw McThunder. Okay. And uh, uh, one of the uh, gentlemen who's now the head brewer over at Garland Brew Works, uh, Adam, he uh, uh, had this video that he did of himself uh, as this character Buzzsaw <laughs> McThunder. And so we thought, okay, we gotta name a beer. Yeah, that's after pretty that. good. So yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so this is uh, one of our flagship IPAs. Uh, it's uh, got uh, you know, a high percentage of hops to it. The uh, alcohol content is right in the 6.8 range. Mm -hmm. and, uh, has kind of a citrusy, fruity notes of oh, yeah. passion fruit, and notes of, uh, of uh, a grapefruit, or am I? A little bit of grapefruit, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, you can uh, smell the hops for sure. Stone yeah. fruits in there too when you get into the flavor. So cool. That's good. So why a brewery? What inspired this? So uh, years back, uh, I mean, well, when I was a kid, my dad brewed beer. And uh, as a kid, I had to be his helper. Yeah. And so I'd follow him around and move stuff for him and all that. And then uh, as I got older, uh, you know, into high school, uh, there was uh, uh, many opportunities where young people like to have beer and can't buy it. And <laughs> I said, hey, I can buy everything to make beer. So ah. I made beer. and. Uh, that's kind of how I got started. Uh, was your dad a home brewer or? Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, so uh, moved from that, kind of fast forward, just did it as a hobby and uh, uh, met my uh, business partner, uh, Paul, uh, who uh, was in the IT world as well as I was. And we were kind of tired of the IT world. and Quite and, the hop. Yeah. <laughs> and went right into. Fun. To, oh, to putting together a business. Uh, surprisingly, our wives both said, yeah, go ahead. Wow. You know, so, yeah, that's great. great. So this next beer uh, kind of harkens back to when my dad was brewing. Uh, I had a very favorite uh, dunkel uh, that he made. And so this is a close oh, yeah. proximity to the dunkel that my dad made. And What's we call dunkel? It, 
So it's it's actually a lagered beer. It's, good. Uh, it's darker, uh, obviously. Yeah. It's a little longer. Yeah. Yes, and it has more of the. Uh, it's actually a very clean beer as as opposed to. It looks what very it looks dark like. and heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's really light. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. This last beer is actually uh, several years in the making. This is a blend of a three-year-old barrel, a two-year-old barrel, and a one-year-old barrel. And uh, we use the different ones to get different notes, flavors, and aromas from it. The older ones are gonna have a more mellowed approach and you get the fresher with the year old and it creates this blend. It almost gives it like a sort of a cider note to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's totally. really, really mm. unique, and, but that's, it's so interesting. Does the name come from the garbage go? Is that? It does, okay. yeah. So uh, we had come up with the several different names and the uh, uh, one that we, had, we were over in the Iron Bridge district. Okay. Uh, and, uh, but there was already a brewery uh, called Iron Bridge. So we were like, what else could we do that's similar or whatever? And then we started thinking, oh, the garbage go. Of you course. Know. So we, we went with Iron it's classic goat. Spokane right Yeah. Now. yeah. yeah. And we did uh, 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 get permission from the artist. Uh, we have our own. She made the uh, a miniature version really? uh, of the uh, uh, Sister Paula Turnbull. Yeah. Uh, she did a smaller version. This was in her mid-90s. And uh, the nuns and her called it uh, Brewski. Uh, oh, my gosh. Funny. As in Bruce. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, we've got some food here. Yes. Um, it looks like uh, we've got uh, our uh, banh mi pizza. And that looks so good. We've yes. got some chicken wings that they're doing right now. And uh, well, the space out here is amazing. As we were walking out here, I was like, oh, this is a great little hidden spot here. Yeah, not a lot of people know we have a patio out yeah. here. And, yeah, it's and nice. They always try to keep it, you know, we do bands out here in the summertime, so it's always a bunch of fun. We're actually going to start to... Uh, we're gonna try to start uh, cornhole tournaments on oh, cool. Tuesdays out yeah. here. So fun. It should be fun. Yeah. Good That's to great. know. We'll have to come back and play. Yeah, thank you so much thank for you. showing us around and showing you how it's all done. That's very cool and very interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. Alrighty, well thank you for watching another episode of Crave TV. Join us next week for more.